What is up everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video and today I am starting a brand new series on my favorite sample libraries and the ones I think you should definitely check out if you are on the hunt for some new sample libraries, especially in the orchestral vein. So um, in this series, we're going to be taking a look at each of the different orchestral sections. So for this first video, we're taking a look at the strings, of course. Um, you know, those are kind of like the bread and butter um, orchestral sections, you know, of you know, the, the orchestra, when we think about or the orchestra, uh, usually the strings are what come to mind first uh, for many, many styles of music. So um, I've chosen five string libraries to compare today. And um, that's for two reasons. Number one, I just like to keep things um, very simple. I'm quite a simple person by nature. So I tend to um, like to work with less if possible. And number two, I mean, I just don't have very many libraries. Um, I stick with maybe one to two on a daily basis, and then occasionally I'll draw on a few others for inspiration. But I think I actually only really have five core libraries, and I, I like out of all five, I really only use two or three at the very most at the moment. Um, so anyway, let's get into it. Uh, the first library I wanted to demonstrate is the Cinematic Studio Strings. This library is synonymous now with like passionate romantic virtual strings. Um, this is usually the first string library that comes to mind when people think of romantic strings. Um, just a little side note before we get into this is that uh, I'm going to be comparing only the violins for this video. And one of the reasons is because I just wanted to keep the orchestral sections as consistent as possible. Um, and I think that if we were to go through every single um, family of the strings, it would take uh, a long while. So um, the good news is all of these libraries are relatively consistent across all the string sections. So you don't have to worry about it sounding... Um, out of place in maybe like the violins compared to like the, the celli or something. All five um, libraries are quite consistent. So anyway, getting into the violins, let's hear the Cinematic Studio Strings Legato first. So first impressions, very buttery, very smooth. Um, it has kind of a dark nature to it. Um, it's almost as if the higher frequencies are more subdued. So you do get more of the body of the sound. And the legato is um, one of the standout features of this library. It's it's It sounds very, very realistic. And the connections, the transitions are very, very beautiful. Let's move on to the, uh, let's just go down the list here. So let's hear the tremolos next. And you'll notice that, yeah, by default, Cinematic Studio Strings has a very simple interface. So it ships with these few patches. And on each patch, you basically have eight unique um, articulations. And they are all kind of the bread and butter, like core articulations you would need for a string library. So here are the tremolos. And also another side note, you'll notice the tail fades away quite quickly. So it was recorded in kind of a medium sized scoring stage, but um, the tail itself is not very long. So if you want it to blend with other libraries with a longer tail, you'll just have to add your own reverb and maybe send a copy of the strings to that reverb to um, widen it up just a little bit. Here are the trills. Mercado. So this is not a true marcato per se, because a marcato is basically like a marked note, and it's 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 considered like a short note. But in the case of this library, it's essentially a um, a staccato sample layered on top of the sustain. So anytime you play a note, it's going to give you this emphasized sound. Um, and then it's going to sustain um, indefinitely. 
And what you can do with this patch is actually play these fast runs and make it sound relatively convincing. So, and of course it doesn't right now because I don't have Legato activated. So that is totally my fault. Here we go. So obviously it doesn't sound that great when it's played slowly because it sounds like each legato transition is being punctuated by an a, a, a staccato or an accent, you know? But when it's played really, really quickly, like... The attack of each of those staccato samples doesn't come out um, quite as much. So then it blends together a little bit better to create that run smeared type of feeling. Um, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to be convincing with the just the regular uh, legato patch there. Here are the staccatos and the short notes. So let's let's start with the longest short we have, which is the sforzando. Staccato. Staccatissimo. Finally, spiccato. So, yeah, quite quite a good length on those um, short notes there. Good variety. Again, this is a workhorse library, so it's not going to have like the all the bells and whistles that would make a library very fancy, you know. Um, so this is a really good library just to get you up and running and do a bulk of your like, you know, basic string work. Then we have some harmonics. Measure tremolos. So I love this patch. Um, let's slow it down a bit so the repetition doesn't come in so fast. Basically, when you play the note, the repetition is going to come in um, depending on how quick your BPM is. So the faster the BPM is, the more quickly the repetition of the note is going to come in. And this is very convincing when you're uh, when you're trying to get this type of sound, um, and you can just also click sync to host for um, the BPM to be lined up in your DAW. Finally, pizzicatos. Bartok. And finally, Colinho. And then you also have an emulated consordino here, which is um, which is great because it doesn't take up additional sample room. So. So the difference is pretty clear. Like it's a little more harsh. It has a little more of a nasally quality to it. Um, it's a little more, more muted as well, true to its name. So very interesting texture there. And that is Cinematic Studio Strings, a very solid workhorse library. And it's not too large either. I believe it's somewhere between 30 and 40 gigabytes large. Moving on to Berlin Strings. So I love orchestral tools and um, Berlin Strings is their flagship string library. So here is what their basic legato sounds like.
and I love the tail. I think the the reverb in the hall, the Teldex stage, is beautiful. So um, I think the main thing to note here is that the sound itself, the quality uh, of the recording is unparalleled. It's beautiful. Um, the actual section size is um, relatively small compared to like a symphonic section, like a a, a big Hollywood uh, section size. And that's because they want to maintain like the detail in the sound. So what I typically like to do is take Berlin strings and layer it in with Cinematic Studio strings for two reasons. Number one, it makes the overall string sound sound slightly bigger as if there's more players. And number two, uh, the more defined nature of Berlin strings really complements the darker nature of Cinematic Studio strings. So this is something I've talked about in quite a few videos actually, but layering is something that's very commonly done in orchestral samples to really beef up the sound or to mix different... Uh, different halls together, you know, and create this more cohesive sound. So that's something I really enjoy doing. Um, let's hear a, uh, sorry, an accented sustain. Trills. So just so you know, the trill plus one is a half step trill and the plus two is a whole step trill. And they also have a dynamics patch. So Berlin Strings is a very, very comprehensive library. This is, I believe like almost 200 gigabytes in size, this one library Berlin Strings. So it's huge, really a lot of detail into it. And it also has a price tag to match. So um, here are some dynamics. Turn up the volume a little bit. So these are like pre-recorded swells. Then we have some MF to P uh, decrescendos. That's P, F, P. F, F down to P. P to F, F. I love the, the sound of that vibrato when it just comes in very, very passionately. So, I mean, for my end, um, I, I tend to use the most core essentials of a library for my work. Um, the, the style of music I do, it, like the Disney orchestral type of thing, it doesn't really need all the extended articulations to really make um, use of the entire library. So that's one of the reasons why I, I try not to invest in too many libraries because um, the ones I already have can already do a lot of the work for me, usually 90, 90 to 95%. And if I need something else, that'll probably just find it in a similar, you know, library there. And then finally, let's hear a few of the short notes. And then we've also got some octave scale runs up and down as well. So let's have, have a listen. So this patch is really, really cool because essentially each of these keys tell you the key of these uh, the run. And depending on what note of that scale you play, that is going to play that scale from that scale degree to the corresponding scale degree an octave higher. So if I have C scale running up, for example, then anytime I play a note of the C major scale, like an F, for example, Okay, well, that one kind of sounds like a, a classic F major scale, but it basically plays the C major scale from F to F. So basically an F Lydian scale, which is really cool. 
you get a lot of flexibility in this case. So, and this is, these are just all the major scales. Then you have major um, down, um, and that's so that's all the different major keys there. And then they also have minor keys as well, I believe. So these are a few of the descending scales. Sorry about that. Cool. All right, uh, moving on to Aflatus Chapter 1 Strings by Stress of Sampling. This is another mammoth beast of a library. And it also has a price tag to match, very similar to Berlin Strings. But the reason for it is because it's essentially like 20 different libraries in one string library. What I mean by this is it has all the individual sections, right? Violins 1, 2, violas, uh, cellos, and basses. But in addition, each of these sections has these um, themed patches with different performing styles for unique inspiration. So like Arrival Violins, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, there's chamber violins, which feature a smaller section of violins. There's lush violins. There's impressionist violins. Um, so not only are these different section sizes, but there are also different manners of performance. And this can really spark some, um, you know, ideas if you that if you're that type of composer who's looking for some inspiration through patches. So the one I want to demonstrate is violins one, uh, Cinda more violins legato, and this is uh, this is basically um, Aflatus's version of CSS, if you will. Sorry, let me take off the overlap here. And it's interesting, like there's only five violins there, but you can really hear the the cohesive sound of everything. And it just really sounds beautiful, detailed. The, the Sorry, the vibrato is gorgeous. Um, it also has a little bit of a darker sound. So if you're going for more of a passionate retro type of thing, then that could fit really well. Let's hear some of these spiccatos. Cato. And you get that big sound of the hall there as well. I, t I tend to like more reverberant libraries, um, but maybe not as big as like Air Studios from Spitfire's um, symphonic range, you know? So I think the size of the hall from the Teldix uh, scoring stage and Aflatus here are both beautiful uh, tales. Impressionist violins, these are larger in size. So what is happening in this patch is very interesting. So I'm playing one note and there's basically just a regular sustain. And when I play another one, there's more of a back and forth texture, almost like a tremolo. And then basically you can only play like two notes at a time, it feels like. So, um, and again, like this library, I haven't explored maybe like, <laughs> or I should say I've only explored maybe like a 10 or 20% of it, but there's just so much to unpack when it's needed there. So very cool. I've made a review on this library as well. So check that out if you haven't yet. Um, Arrival Violins, now this is a really cool patch. So it starts outside of the note and it comes in. And this is this is so cool because like um, every time you play a note, the, the, um, the semitone on either side of that note is being played and then they both ease into the main note, right? So if I play a C, then you're gonna hear a C sharp and a B natural at the same time and then they meld together into the C. And like, how cool is that? That's literally like a decrescendo forming itself, but notes, you know? So if I play four notes, that's, we're hearing eight notes meld into four. Okay, wow, right? Like, amazing. 
I, I I don't think that's been done before in a sample library. So very cool. And then Spider Violins, um, this one, I think you just play it and th there's some textures that come in. So a little bit of detuning, a little bit of plucking on the strings. Right, so it has this kind of ethereal atmosphere, which is really, really unique. All right, moving on to Sinistrings. So Sinistrings core, very similar to CSS in the manner that the core articulations are recorded. Um, Sinistrings Pro at the time of this recording has not been released. I think it's um, not even in the works yet, but looking forward to that when it happens. Um, the way the Sinistrings libraries are set up is very, very um, straightforward. You have basically three styles of short notes. Legato is activated by pedal, sustain pedal, and there are other articulations like um, pizzicato and colenio, and then harmonics on separate patches. So let's play a few of these short notes first. I'm gonna play lightly to activate the shortest note values. So essentially, like the harder you play, the longer the notes, right? So that's what was happening here. Um, the hard, like I was playing at as close to 127 as possible. So then it activated that longest uh, note value. And then the legato, if I just press down the sustain now and play, you're gonna hear the notes are connected. Played a little too, uh, little too fast or a little too sloppy. Anyway, <laughs> so with the most recent update of Cine Strings, the uh, um, the Legato engine is adaptive. You know, so like it keeps up with your playing speed. The Legato transitions um, shorten accordingly with your speed. If you play faster, it's just gonna speed up the uh, the um, the Legato transitions. So. It, you're able to play runs a little better. Um, pizzicato. If you play a little harder, you get the colino. Finally, harmonics. So a very like airy sound. You hear that there was a bit of a click there, which, um, which is very interesting actually. It might even fit in a, uh, in a score if it's like, if if there's other elements in the mix to hide it. But <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, the overall tone quality of Cine Strings is bright. Recorded at the MGM scoring stage, very similar to uh, Berlin Strings, but I feel like the sound of Cine Strings is even more upfront and even more Hollywood sounding, right? Um, the Berlin Strings has more of that classical film scoring sound, while CSS, of course, has that romantic, passionate sound. Alphalatus is again is is more of that passionate, old, old, uh, older type of sound as well. So, um, cool. All right, and finally, we have Area from Audio Imperia. This is the most recent library of the bunch, and this is what it sounds like. Now, I should let you know that this is only the basic articulations. The um, advanced ones can also be found in the multi-patches, which contain more extended articulations, but I'm just going to demonstrate the simple ones. Again, we're kind of listening to the tone and maybe the, the legato and all that, so...
So what do you notice? The sound is upfront. It's a uh, very full, um, a very modern sound, if you will. And that's because of the modern mix. With the classic mix, it actually sounds a little bit more like CSS in a way. Sorry, the samples are trying to load there, but you get the idea. Um, here are the pizzicatos. Fast piccato. Sorry. Slow spiccato. That was terrible, but um, <laughs> that is how the slow spiccato sounds and staccato. Very bright, very ringing, very upfront. Finally, the mercados. And the long mercados. And on that dominant seventh chord, I will leave you hanging. So anyway, that is the um, an overview of the five string libraries that I personally recommend and own. Um, just to do a quick recap, if you need passionate sounding strings with beautiful legato and are willing to uh, play with a little bit of delay, and by the way, you can set this in your dot so that the delay is, goes away, um, then CSS is a clear choice. It's definitely affordable and you will definitely get your mileage out of it if it's the sound you like. Berlin Strings is wonderful because it, not only does it have an immense depth of articulations, but the sound is wonderful. I, I really, really like the legato, and you have a bunch of possibilities that come with a library like this with the amount of articulations and the engine. Um, it can get overwhelming at times, however, just because of the nature of the size and all of that and what it provides. So if you don't really need all of that, then you, know, you might decide to go with um, a simpler library. But Berlin Strings has a wealth of articulations, and it sounds wonderful as well. Recorded in Teldex has that beautiful um, classical film scoring sound. Aflatus is beautiful because it has just a gorgeous tone as well, recorded in a, a good scoring stage too. Um, a little darker in nature, but very, very characterful and very passionate in every single patch. There's always an intent, and there's always a performance vision that goes into every sample. So that is what I like to use Aflatus for. Sinistrings core is the go-to Hollywood, like upfront in your face type of strings. And I would use this just for your um, tugging string shorts that really need to come through the mix a lot. And legato has been generally improved as well throughout. So you can definitely use it for more romantic passages in addition to that. And finally, Araya is a modern string library, um, definitely suited to maybe more modern styles of music, like trailer music. Um, not maybe as much classical music, in my opinion, but I think for the more, uh, you know, the more upfront styles that uses strings that really need to cut through the mix and present themselves in a really bright manner, Araya um, has no problem doing that. So these are five of my favorite libraries so far. And um, yeah, I, I just use them on a very regular basis. CSS probably the most just because of the style I write, but hopefully you got something out of this video. And if you're interested in reading more about like the different libraries that I recommend in different orchestral sections and um, ethnics as well, like jazz libraries and all of that, um, I put together a guide specifically dedicated to the different um, libraries that I recommend. And they are my favorite cinematic orchestral libraries. You can download it absolutely free. It's more like a buyer's guide. So if you're interested in looking for different libraries, um, you can refer to it for your next purchase if you like to. So it's absolutely free. You would download it in the first link in the description box. Um, hopefully that helps you and you can let me know what you think about it. And, uh, and please also let me know in a comment like what your favorite string library is and what you personally use because I'd love to 
discuss with you, you know, the pros and cons of your preferred library. And you can let me know if you don't like any of mine libraries, you know, um, it's all open for discussion. So I'd love to hear from you. So in any case, thank you very much for watching the video. I will catch you in the next video where we'll talk about the woodwinds because it's one of my favorite orchestral sections. I think it is my favorite. So in that one, I will talk about um, the libraries I have for that one. And it's actually way less than five. So um, I'll catch you in that one. Take care. Bye-bye.